question to the panel, um, starting with Crystal, is um, how is technology helping services in your part of rural New Zealand? And I think those mics will work for you both. Cool. Kia ora. Um, so for me, I guess um, working for New Zealand Young Farmers, we are largely working in the capability space. So looking at um, attraction and retention of young people um, into employment in the industry. And we're not just talking um, agriculture in terms of sheep and beef or dairy, but we're talking wider primary sector, so um, horticulture, forestry, fisheries, um, yeah, the works. Um, and in terms, uh, I guess I'm going to go back a little bit to um, what our CEO, Linda Coppersmith, um, talked to, which is the generation that we're dealing with um, now that we that we are needing to work with. And on one hand, um, as a wider primary sector, we are seeing the increasing influence of um, the conscious consumer coming through and impacting what we're doing right across the food and fibre um, sectors. Um, and then from an employment perspective for um, our large and our small businesses working across this space, um, we're having to work with um, millennials like myself and um, Gen Z and the next lot coming through um, who have a slightly different um, focus around uh, what we expect from our working environment and what we want from our working environment. So we've, we've taken a shift from a space that was, um, you know, from, from drivers um, that were more around career development and wealth creation to um, being more values focused um, in terms of uh, needing to do work that is in line with your own values, whatever they might be. But um, also um, some of those values being around um, health and well-being, environment mental sustainability um, and what else have I got here um, and animal welfare actually is another one which has come through but um, I think as an industry we've got this really awesome opportunity to not be um, the problem child as we're so often pointed out to be but actually um, step up and continue to lead the way um, and, and as an industry we want to do that we've heard um, from a lot of our industry bodies um, we are here um, very receptive to what technology is out there, um, but we do need the connectivity uh, to be able to make that happen. And I've sat in the middle of Auckland um, on in the telecommunications space, um, working with teams uh, rolling out RBI. Um, and then I've also sat um, on a farm, dairy farm, in the middle of um, the Waikato where I couldn't get connectivity and um, the business there weren't able to use technology that they wanted to use um, to manage um, animal uh, health. So, yeah. Good. And you're sort of covered, probably diplomatically touching on that sort of urban bias that perhaps we might might see a little of as playing as a dynamic. So thank you, Crystal. David, um, uh, David Dyer from Plant and Food Research. So what are you seeing... I'm interested particularly, so I'm going to give you the hawk hat today, but like, you know, we, we're talking a lot about um, animal-based food and food producing and, and dairy, but what are you seeing in your part of uh, how technology is affecting your part of the world? Well, I'm the technology services manager, so um, I'm meant to know. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, just wrote myself off. Um, so... Um, Plant food research, as you're, as you're correct, is um, it's horticultural and uh, the food part of it is um, seafood. So um, we vary um, quite a bit. We have farm research networks, which are um, some of them are farms for some of our arable crops, but also we have a lot of horticulture. Um, so the challenges that we have within technology is um, no different to most people, really. It's how to get connectivity where our staff members are. Um, we have come up with a few different type of technologies. One of them is just to enable um, some good mobile connectivity um, in the field, um, basically being able to use the 3G network and get connection back to our um, inside services. Um, that works all right. We're, we're lucky than, um, than some of the people here because we actually are on the fringe of connectivity, so we tend to get varying amounts of I say 3G, 4G, 4G is um, just in the cities. Um, connectivity, so we can actually um, provide services to people out in the, in the orchard. Um, we're going through the same challenges as others where we've gone from paper-based, trying to get onto technology, and then trying to go to actually um, uploading data live. We're actually um, developing an application right now um, 
but we're hedging our bets, I suppose you could say, because what we're allowing it is to actually store and forward. So if it's online, it will take the data straight up, but if it can't, it will hold it and forward it when it can. Thank you, David. And um, Gough from Vision Stream. Perhaps, sorry, Gough, can you just give us a bit of, I haven't got a bio for you, but explain Vision Stream for the audience, please. Sure, thanks very much. Um, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Um, look, thanks very much for the opportunity and Craig for the invite. Um, Vision Stream, we're a field services organization. Uh, essentially, we've been around for 10 years um, servicing clients like um, Chorus and formerly Team Talk, Vital. We build, design, um, and maintain fixed and, and wireless networks. Um, so from a field services perspective, this is a very interesting question for me um, because we, we deploy IoT networks as well. Um, and, and I've heard a lot of talk today about the difference between this, this, or this divide between urban and rural in terms of the, the, the level of service that, uh, that technology is able to be both implemented but also um, add value. And, and, and I've got an interesting take on this really. And, and in the same way that, um, for example, Uber, uh, autonomous self-driving vehicles, that concept will first happen in an, in an urban area. I think the same is true for the connected technology that we should be seeing in the rural sector. I mean, this is a $44 billion a year industry, and yet the uptake of this technology is relatively low. And we have to ask ourselves why. And then we look at a city like Auckland that is talking about being a smart city. And we've got a number of use cases there that are absolutely applicable in the rural sector. But none of them are being deployed either in Auckland or here. And so that leads me to believe, you know, like you said earlier, Mike, um, is it about coverage? I mean, coverage is clearly front and center right now, but I think if we look at what's next, there's, there's leadership required, and it's probably from all of us in this room, but I mean, how many of us are actually employing, for example, um, chief digital officers into our organizations, and how many of us are waiting for that strategy to form as opposed to embracing that, um, getting, you know, investing in, that, in the development of that strategy and, and taking advantage of, of some of these use cases uh, you know, coverage, I don't think, is the only reason that is stopping us from deploying some of this technology into the agricultural sector or into smart city environment. And, and I feel quite strongly about that. Yep. So we see a lot of that in the, in the, in the field services space. Yep. David, do you want to talk about where you're seeing, because obviously horticulture, as I sort of introduced this morning, we you know, just had the um, SOPI report from um, MPI, and uh, you know, horticulture has just been that quiet, quite achiever and, and, and going on. I know you talk cropping as well, but um, where have you where are you seeing successes in your sector where technology is enabling you? You know, we can talk about ro robotics and automatic automatic and RSC. Where would you like to answer on that? IoT robotics, that's still really um, a future dream for us. Um, it's almost um, a solution looking for a problem. Um, I suppose where we've actually had the, uh, the most success is actually within um, genetics. So um, doing um, genome analysis, which has actually enabled us to find the markers responsible for the traits in the fruit, because by and large we um, try and create uh, better cultivars for fruit and vegetables, etc. So being able to find those markers that are responsible for the traits, whether it's taste, texture, storage, that storage to market, those kind of things, that's, that's probably been the the biggest advancement we've had in the last few years, although it's probably been going on for 10. Crystal, what about you when you're talking around talent and, you know, I look around the room and most of us are middle-aged or upwards and we've got bright young things like you coming through the ranks. So what, I mean, what's your view of how um, this audience is understanding your generation and what and, and the challenge of attracting talent into ag using technology? I mean, what's the what's the perception out there? Yes, um, in terms of the perception, I think I think what we're we're more seeing is um, an is industry that is there's a lot of um, yeah proactive work being done, but um, there's also a lot of reactivity in terms of I mentioned um, it being very um, much driven by the conscious consumer and and what they're wanting, and also being driven by um, yeah people coming through um, wanting values based work um, and work that aligns with that and I think technology um, really is going to enable our farmers to um, work in a way that our young people believe in so whether it's being solution focused whether it's working more collaboratively um, whether it's being able to manage environmental impact a lot better um, all of that is going to be through technology um, and then in terms of um, from our business's perspective, um, you can't um, 
manage progress if you can't measure it um, and I think we can do that through technology and through collecting data which I know has been mentioned quite a lot um, but then being able to um, have connected um, data is that next step um, and there's yeah a lot of isolated work going on but it would be great to see um, some more sharing of that data um, so that our business owners um, at the end can make better decisions uh, more promptly but then also um, our young people coming through can feel like uh, they can actually have some really positive impact in the work that they're doing in this space and I think um, if they feel like they can have a positive impact through that um, use of technology um, there's going to be a lot more uh, young people coming through into the sector. Are you seeing any examples of that where you're seeing those positive sort of success stories coming through and people are saying, I, I want to work for a business like that or, um, you know, that they, they see something that they like because, again, talent is a very uh, a very uh, scarce commodity uh, currency sometimes. And are you seeing sort of are there, are there stories or companies that you feel are doing it really well, particularly with your New Zealand Young Farmers hat on? Um, I think I think companies are um, continuing to to change um, to sort of you know meet that need and create those opportunities for young people coming through. I, I think uh, there's a almost like a culture shift in terms of um, people being more open to what what could be out there um, and that there, there could be yeah a, a different way to do things um, but then also uh, yeah other end of the spectrum um, some of our work that we do is working with um, tertiary students and we're seeing them come up with some really incredible um, technology and um, science as well but just innovation in general around solving some of these big problems um, across the food and fiber sector. Good. Um Garth, did you want to add on to that? I mean, how were you out there in field services? Um, how are you seeing some of the success stories playing out in a positive sense? Because we're going to talk about collaboration in a minute, but, you know, how, how are people working together? Um, how are we making advances? How are we getting, how are we getting this technology out there quicker? Mm. Uh, thank you. That's, um, that's a great question, actually. I think, um, you know, we, uh, one of the biggest, uh, I think, surprises for me in, in the real world, in, in, the, in the sense that, you know, we've deployed, for example, 2,000 sensors in Christchurch to help um, monitor the vacuum, vacuum sewage system over there. And we've got sensors in Auckland that monitor soil moisture. Um, and so when you start to deploy this type of technology, the, the, the real interesting thing for me is how it brings alive um, the, the very network or the, or the assets or the environmental management system that our people and our organizations are, are working to, to manage and maintain. The lights come on because you know the, the fact of putting a soil moisture sensor there crystallizes a different way of thinking, and and suddenly we see um, you know we, we're drawing down data which has always been available. For example, climatic or, or weather conditions and, and rainfall, and looking for the correlations between this to help drive better use of our um, limited resources or a better outcome in terms of um, um, environmental management. And so that sort of paradigm shift in, in uh, you know, introducing real-time connected technology into these real-world challenges is, for me, um, the, the beautiful thing is just that the lights coming on with individuals, right, and, and organizations. Yep. Yep. And then, um, David, and in, in you, you know, you've been talking about genomics and, and, and looking at the genetic side of things for plant and food, but where, where, the, where are those technologies going for you guys and, and where are the real-life applications in terms of grafting and propagation what where where's that all going for you what how's that moving things in a flywheel effect much faster yeah i think you're talking about um and and the breeding program yeah. side of things for us that's where um the most potential I see for um, all of the buzzwords, your your AIs and your um, <laughs> and robotics and all the rest of it, where um, you can take some menial tasks because a lot of um, the field workers have to go out and, and basically just take um, samples of the fruit, etc. Whether that's um, you know, a visual sample or or they're doing some actual measurements, and there's a potential there for them that to actually be taken over by. Um, Robotics, artificial intelligence, etc. 